Hi, welcome to Jeremy's Tech Channel. Today we're going to be checking out MX Linux. Okay, today we're checking out MX Linux. MX Linux seems to be pretty popular and we're going to find out why. It looks pretty cool and I will read a little bit, just a little bit of this. We will get in and I've got it loaded up on the live environment on my virtual machine. Then we'll go through the install process, poke around a little bit and hopefully give you a sense of what this distribution is all about and if it's for you. MX Linux is a cooperative venture between the Antics and MX Linux communities. It is a family of operating systems that are designed to combine elegant and efficient desktops with high stability and solid performance. That sounds cool to me. MX graphics tools provide an easy way to do a wide variety of tasks, while the live USB and snapshot tools inherited from Antics add impressive portability and remastering capabilities. Extensive support is available through videos, documentation, and a very friendly forum. So they have a couple of versions here that they ship with. They have XFCE, KDE, Fluxbox. I think there are some community additions as well. I'm gonna click on this download piece here. They have three desktop options available and then they have unofficial respins by the MX developers. XFCE, our flagship desktop, KDE and Fluxbox. So I went to the MX Linux facts page on their website and a couple things to be made aware. <laughs> What's the deal with MX and System D? <laughs> How come there are still systemd packages installed? Systemd is included in order to allow some important applications to run, but is not enabled by default. For more information, go to their user manual. There also is um, a way you can boot into systemd by default, and they also have a description quickly about their package manager, MX Package Installer. They have two graphical package managers, the MX Package Installer, for one-click installation removal of popular apps, as well as apps in Debian Stable, MX Test Repo, Debian Backports, and Flatpaks. Okay, then they have the Synaptic Package Manager, which is still cool. KDE Plasma uses Muon in lieu of Synaptic. Okay, fine. So this is a, I'd say it's a Debian base, but it looks like they add some of their own repos and Flatpaks available for you to use in getting your applications that you need for your system. Let's take a look. I've already gone into the live environment here and I chose the XFCE flagship version. MX Welcome, FAQ, User Manual, Wiki, Tools. Let's see what's in the tools real quick. Live USB kernel updater. Oh, that's cool. Live USB maker. Create a full featured live USB. Thank you very much. Man, there's a lot of stuff up front just with the live environment. Create a live ISO snapshot of your running system. So maybe if you're running on a USB drive and you just want to take it around and have it set up the way you want it to, whether you have to go into a library computer or somewhere else, you know, you're visiting family somewhere and you want to be able to have that. That is cool. There is a way here for you to install the NVIDIA drivers and codecs and Conky. Conky is cool. And they've got this little way to get Conky set up. Tells you how to move it. Alt, left click, Alt, right click to resize. Okay, just on desktop one. Tweak panel. Oh, okay. You got your themes, all that kind of stuff. They have their own theme. They have their panel to the left. They have these pieces here, forums, videos. I'm guessing this is opening up a web browser showing you how to get yourself around and use MX Linux. Guys, if you were using MX Linux, I haven't even installed it onto a virtual machine. I haven't even really poked around the live environment and I can already see why some of you love this. This is cool. Contribute popular apps in a tour. <laughs> okay, look at this. If you want a more detailed description of what each of these pieces are, that conky piece that they have that's pretty cool looking, I like it. They call this their MX Tools. Great, they're welcome. They show you how to install apps, updating. Time shift is already there. Love me some time shift, guys. This is just awesome. User demo, password demo. Okay, cool. So if I go here, if I try demo, does that work? Yeah, so you can clean up some old files, empty trash. You can set up to auto clean these pieces and then you can run a 
Disk Usage Analyzer. I'm guessing these tools are gonna to be available once we install, but this is one of the few times that I am really enjoying being in a live environment for as long as I am. Normally I'm like, let's get it installed and let's see what it is once it's installed. But to have this available for you before you even boot the system, it's just great. Enough doting, Jeremy. Let us continue. Let's install MX Linux, shall we? And look, over here on the left, they are describing for you on this pane over here. If you are newer to Linux, man, this really just gives you the information you need. This is this is cool. Yes, I want to format the entire disk. So it looks like I'm actually installing right now. I don't even know if I'm gonna speed this up too much because it says it's copying the new system. I'm wondering if it's taking what the live environment is and finding a way to quickly put it directly onto the virtual hard drive that I have here. Oh, it's asking for some operator input here. Hit pause for required operator input because I'm supposed to input the computer name and pieces like that. I'm going to change the time zone. What's on this service settings? I don't know why you'd want to remove sudo, but I'm sure someone does. Or maybe you don't have a printer. You don't want cups. You can remove that. It's asking for the default user stuff. So far, this has been a very quick install process. And I like some of the choices that you have here in getting this set up. Automatically reboot the system and click finish. Boom. All right, I'll log in. If you are familiar with XFCE, the desktop environment is not gonna be new for you, but seeing some of these pieces, I'm gonna go right in and see this update piece here. This is the MX updater, and you can select a couple of things like automatically answer yes to all prompts during upgrade, automatically close terminal window when upgrade is complete. Now, if that means if you're sure these packages are going to be upgraded that you feel confident you want them installed that you're sure that the upgrade is going to happen and you won't want to read what happened if there was an error you just know there won't be an error i don't know how you would know that for sure but maybe you do so now we go through here it looks like there is a little transparency piece here on the terminal all right that was updating it communicated quickly and clearly gave me some options on that install process, pulled up a terminal, I'm updated. We are greeted with this welcome screen. We can show this dialogue at startup every time or not. We walked through that piece with the live environment, so I don't feel the need to do that here. Very cool, we've got our desktop set up here, I believe. Oh, okay, here's where the menu is, nice and clean ready to go. We were just messing with some of these MX tools earlier, but I wanted you to see this again, and maybe there would be something different with the full install, so I'm checking, and I don't recognize something being different. You've got a repo manager here for working through your repositories and your sources. All right, this menu down here. I like how this is laid out. This is pretty cool. All right, now I can search for something, but what I'm gonna do first is pull up this terminal and let's see. All right, NeoFetch is installed. You've got your kernel showing the 5.16.0-5MX-AMD64 kernel. It shows we're running XFCE, the theme, I'm guessing this will have this as well. We are using 645 megabytes of the 16 gigabytes of RAM that I have dedicated for this virtual machine. So that means that we have 15.3 gigabytes free still. That's about normal for XFCE. I'm gonna start using the term like they have it here. XFCE is a midway desktop environment. I think that's probably more appropriate. Like I said, I like this little heads up display here. Right clicking gives you, you know, you can create a launcher, create a folder right here on the desktop if that matters to you. You can just go ahead and open a terminal, run command. There you go. So we can run command. We can type in Firefox. You're able to open up Firefox. You can see here they've got their blog, the MX Forum, Antics, Antics Forum already set up here. Let's check out what we have. Thunderbird, Firefox. I'm gonna search for display real quick. I'm going to choose a resolution that will work better for me personally. 
Conky Manager. Oh, con that was Conky Toggle. <laughs> I guess you can turn Conky on and off. Okay, Conky Toggle. And it says that there in big descriptive words, Conky Toggle on and off. So I turned it off. I was it was when I changed the resolution. It was sitting where it was with the older resolution, and it wasn't where I thought it should be. It was in an odd place. So I was just gonna to go to the configuration piece and configure it and move it. But I ended up using the thing called Conky Toggle, you know, where it's toggling it on and off and I turned it off, then I turned it back on and it's right where I felt like it should be. If I want to move it, and let's type in Conky again and see there is a theme manager and change the details of your desk desktop system monitor. I like that they have that available. It says to move, alt and left click. Okay. Oh, that's easy. So I can move it to resize, alt and right click. I see the pane is kind of like a rectangle here. And if you're gonna add more information, you will want to move that up, which is cool. Okay, but if I alt and left click, I can put it back where it was. That is fine. You've got the ability to go right into the Conky Manager and their themes here that are available for you. There is something elegant and simple with the Conky Manager there. Now, a couple pieces we need to make sure we go through. We've been navigating this a little bit. We need to know how to install a package. So I'm gonna type in software, MX package installer. And here is their package installer. Let's see if it'll redraw if I pull this out. And they have it organized with folders or with a search function. So I will search Kden Live, and there we go. Install. These, this is getting pulled from the Debian stable repo. Okay, process finished successfully. Just of note, they have flat packs here with a warning. MX Linux includes this repository of flat packs for the user's convenience only. It is not responsible for the functionality of the individual flat packs themselves. I respect that. Loading and populating the information and you can install the flat packs as you would anything else. Great, another warning about using their test repo. It's for providing testing purposes only, but it's there. This is a straightforward package installer, you know, graphical front end, no problem there. Let me go and see if this works. Let's get a terminal going, XFCE terminal, and let's see how we would install something with the command line. And I have requested through sudo apt install audacity. So I'm going to install audacity through the command line and it's pulling it and it's installed. So now if I type audacity, super cool. All right. Nothing crazy, but hey, because it's Debian based, the apt grouping of commands is where you're going to live if that matters to you. Just doing a quick look through of what's in the menu here. You have a favorites folder, which I think is great for any XFC install. By the way, these little pieces up here are really nice. You've got your power, your settings manager, locking the screen and switching users just right there at the top, all your applications and then your breakdown here. And they, you know, installed some things. You have LibreOffice, Firefox, Thunderbird, Transmission. Those pieces, Pulse Audio is installed, not much else. Their real big piece here is that MX Tools of awesomeness. XFCE is great. So let's just see what wallpapers they have. I do like this default one. I like the flowers. Obviously you'd need to change your conky theme if you were gonna use this one. They've given you some pretty great themes. I like it. I like it a lot. Then your power, logging out, safe session for future logins. So what do we learn checking out MX Linux today? One, they have some of the coolest tools. <laughs> that tool group is awesome. Everything from being able to navigate, I was just enjoying myself just in the live environment before I even install it. 
onto the virtual machine. So much you could do within that live environment that they had thought through. Then getting it in, XFCE just felt great. The little conky monitor, I know it's a small thing, but from a person who likes to quickly just glance over and see when I'm rendering something, what resources are being used. I, I like being able to do that and they do it in an attractive, elegant way. You've got the Debian stable situations. They've got their testing repos. They've got flat packs. Pretty much however you want to install software, you are going to be able to do and do it well and do it easily. I can see why people love this. Who would I think MX Linux is for? Everybody. Everybody. Everybody should like them some MX Linux. Now, what I have not experienced yet or know about, what's the upgrade process going to be? What was it like, guys, if you were on MX Linux and you were um, just mo they moved things along here. What is it like when they took on the stable repos of Debian 11? Was it something, you know, you didn't even notice they took care of? Or was there, you know, you had to intentionally and purposefully update? It looks like there's a update feature here. It lets you know what packages need to be updated. It was very easy to navigate. They don't make assumptions on whether you want something or don't want something. The, in the install process, they had the ability to add and remove some things, like if you don't want printer support or if you don't want Bluetooth. For those of you who are MX Linux fanboys, I can see why. If I decide to move away from an Arch-based system to a Debian system, this is very attractive to me. And you know, I'm falling in love with XFCE every time I use it. I hope you learned something. I hope you got a, a sense of what MX Linux is about. I'll see you next time.